Welcome back. In this video, we're going to expand on our knowledge and introduce you to a few more HTML tags and make this website look a little bit prettier than just hello there. To get started, I'm just going to move the screens around so you can see better. All right. So we have the left and right. And again, just to make sure everything works, if I change anything here to boo, and then I click save, and then I refresh the page, I have everything updating. Perfect. Now, these aren't the only HTML tags that you'll encounter. There's actually a ton of them. And if you go back to the w3schools.com, you'll see over here all the HTML tags that exist. There's a lot of them. We're only going to be going through I would say maybe 10 or 15 or so, because those are the only ones that, well, technically that I've used in many years of development. There's a few things on here that I've never even heard of, I've never used. You can always look these up and learn them yourself. But I'll say that there's about 10 or 15 tags that are used 99% of the time, and those are the ones that you'll encounter. So we'll go through some of those most popular ones. And HTML doesn't really get any harder than, than this. This is the syntax. As long as you get used to these little signs and structure, you're pretty much a HTML developer. So the first tag that I want to introduce you to is the H1 tag. So the way that I have it here is actually not right. You want to make sure that everything is surrounded by a tag. So a web browser right now can see boo and just print out boo. But if you want to do it right, you'd want to put something like an H1. And an H1 tag, if I save this and I refresh, we get what we call a header. So that is a header and then one. What does one mean? Well, it actually goes all the way up to six. So if I change this to two, and I'm not going to do every single one. Let's just do another one. H6, boo, H6. And if I save this and refresh the page, you can see that there's different sizes in the text. So that's the header tag. And again, if I scroll through the W3 schools and I go to the H, you see over here that there's the header tags explained here. And this website is really, really cool because you can actually click on try it yourself and you can play around with different things. Click run and it changes it for you. So again, this is a really, really good website for you to get familiar with all the tags. But again, we're going to stick to our website for now. Another thing that I want to introduce you to is something called a P tag or a paragraph tag. A paragraph tag lets you have paragraphs. So now if I refresh, well, there's not much different from what we had before, which was no tags and just saving it. Refresh. But you can see the difference when I copy and paste this and have a few paragraphs versus this. Let's see what happens. So I save this. You'll see over here that with Sublime Text, after, I don't know, I want to say about maybe like 20 saves, it'll ask you to make a purchase because technically this is an unregistered one. You can ignore it for now, just click cancel. Again, it's just one annoying thing that will pop up every now and then. I actually have a registered Sublime Text. I just wanted to show you this error so you're not surprised when you see it. Use Sublime Text for as long as you need it for free. When you start getting into the developer role and working full time with it, I do recommend that you make a purchase. It's a great program and you still get everything through the unregistered. You just have this pop up that shows up after a few saves. But anyway, from now on, I'm going to be using a registered Sublime account. I just wanted to show you that error. If I refresh the page here, you'll see that I have the paragraphs show up nicely. But these unstructured pieces of text, well, everything's kind of in line and, and HTML doesn't really know what to do with it. So it puts everything on one line. I also want to show you one other quick trick in Sublime Text. So 
writing this gibberish is not very exciting and kind of takes a bit of time and developers are lazy. We want to make sure that everything is done fast and efficient. So if you actually put lorem here and then press tab, you'll get lorem ipsum paragraphs. So let's do that. I'm going to delete that, lorem tab, and then one more lorem tab. Perfect. Let's save that and refresh. And we have nice paragraphs. As you can see, we have some tags and what we call nested tags. So you can see that the body is the parent and Sublime Text actually lets you close and open these. So you have the body tag, you have the header tags, which are children of the body tag, and then we have P tags. A lot of people get confused in the naming. I've mentioned these as tags, so essentially anything that has this syntax is a tag, but this is called an H1 element. So that's when it's an entire block of functionality with content inside it. So again, tags, and then this is an H1 element. Again, it's just naming, but you'll hear tags and elements kind of used interchangeably, but those are the specific differences. All right, let's get into some of the more exciting things. Let's say, for example, I really want to emphasize lorem ipsum here. Well, I can use another tag, b tag, and then we close it at lorem ipsum. And let's make the screen here a little bit bigger just so you can see. There you go. So we have the b tags over here. And if I click Save, I refresh. Oops, no, we don't want to translate this page. Uh, we see that this is now bolded. Again, let's make it a little bit bigger. There you go. Now, this syntax is actually not used anymore, or it's not recommended. Obviously, it still works. But there was a problem that HTML was initially used for websites that ran on computers, on PCs, on Macs. And now we have things such as mobile phones and iPads. Although the bolded text, and we actually have another one, which was the italicized I. Although we had this, for most phones, some of them didn't have ability to bold the text and didn't have the ability to italicize. Or some screen readers, uh, which people who are visually impaired use, didn't really understand the meaning behind italicize and bold. So now we use something called strong for bolded and refresh. And then for italicized, we use EM for emphasis. And there you go. Now, the reason this change was made was a move towards something called semantic HTML. And we'll get into that into a later lesson. But just know that there's some tags that have evolved over the years, and it's part of why HTML5 exists. We'll get into that a little bit more, but just wanted to give you a quick note on that. All right, I think that's enough for now. We're going to get into more tags in the next video. For now, play around, and I'll see you in the next one.